aboard. Plane now leaving for Omaha in the east. All aboard. All aboard. Philco Radio Mysteries on the air. The Philco Radio Mystery Contest with $50,000 in cash prizes, huge weekly prizes, mammoth grand prizes, a thrilling new contest of skill. Every week at this same time over this station, your Philco Radio Tube dealer presents transcribed Philco Radio Mysteries. Fun, excitement, suspense, and an opportunity to win your share of $50,000 in cash prizes. Anybody can enter. Nothing to buy. If you haven't already done so, learn all about it in the big free Philco Mystery Book. Free without any obligation whatsoever at your Philco Radio Tube Dealer store. You need the book to enter this contest. It contains official entry blanks, lists all the prizes, tells you what to do to win. Be sure you have a free book. I'll wait a moment while those of you who already have your Philco Mystery Book open it to pages 10 and 11. Watch the diagram on page 10 as you listen to the program. Take notes. Listen carefully. All ready? Phil Cole, the beautiful girl detective, is going to find the murderer in Murder in the Sky. See if you can tell how she finds the guilty person. Our scene opens in the waiting room of the airport of a western city. Phil Cole and her novel-writing friend, Tom Taylor, are returning to New York from their adventure in the West. As we meet them today, they are having their tickets and sleeping accommodations examined by the airline official at the desk. Is the plane on time tonight? Yes, Mr. Taylor. She'll be landing any minute now. Is the plane full this trip? No, it isn't, Miss Cole. There'll be only six passengers. Ah, hear that? She's coming in right on schedule. Want to go outside and watch her land, Phil? Oh, I don't think so, Tom. Let's wait in here till the porter gets our bags aboard. Okay, darling. No other woman but you could keep me from watching an airplane land. Oh, silly. Go on out if you want to. No, I think I'll just sit here and gaze at you. Say, young man, is this the sleeper for the East coming in? Yes, sir. You're just in time. I was delayed at the hotel. Lost my glasses somewhere. Are you Mr. Guy Johnson? Hope so. If I'm not, I've been lying for years. I guess the three of us are going to be sleeping companions, eh? Well, uh, not exactly, but we're all going on this plane, if that's what you mean. (laughs) Uh, Mr. Johnson, you'll be in lower six. Uh, Thank you, my boy. By the way, can you tell me whether or not Miss Rita Rogers and her brother will be on this plane? Is that Miss Rita Rogers, the new movie star? Yes. Yes, it's Rita Rogers, the great, big, wonderful star. (laughs) Everybody knows Rita Rogers, but nobody knows her husband. Oh, Are you... I say, uh, Mr. Um... Taylor. Tom Taylor. Take my advice, Mr. Taylor, and never marry a famous woman. Well, that settles it, Phil. Now I'll never marry you, no matter how hard you coax. Oh, Tom, you're breaking my heart. (laughs) Oh, dear. Now I'm in for another boring night in the air. You like this humorous magazine, Mr. Johnson? Might cheer you up. Thanks, old man, but I couldn't read tonight, even if I tried. Unfortunately, I'm far-sighted, and I've mislaid my glasses best thing for you to do, then, is go to sleep. That's exactly what I propose to do. This way, everyone. Plane's waiting. Mind if I take your arm, old man? Without those blasted glasses of mine, I'll probably fall in the dark out here and break my neck. Oh, hang right on. You all right, Phil? Yes, Tom. I have regular cat's eyes. Hey, what a swell-looking plane. Oh, yes, it's a beauty, isn't it? How do you do, everyone? I'm Helen Drake, your stewardess. Oh, how do you oh, do, how do, do? You're Miss Cole... Mr. Taylor and uh, Mr. Johnson, is that correct? That's right, Mr. Drake. Well, the other three passengers are already asleep. Now, won't you step aboard? Be careful of those steps, Miss Cole. Oh, uh, by the way, Miss Drake, is Rita Rogers among those other three passengers? Yes, she's across the aisle in lower two. And her brother David Rogers is in lower three. Dr. John Baker is in lower five. Dr. John Baker, the well-known surgeon? Yes, a movie star and a famous doctor. Now, uh, if you want anything, just ring the bell. Oh, thank you, Miss Drake, but I think I'll turn in right away. Yeah, me too. And so will I. You all right, Mr. Johnson? Yes, thanks. Fine. Good night. Good night, Mr. Taylor. Can I get you anything, Phil? No, thanks, Tom. Good night. Good night. Is that you? No, Tom. It's the stick. 
stewardess, I think. <laughs> David, are we crashing? We're okay, Rita. It's this girl, the stewardess. Oh, what, what's happening? Oh, Miss Drake. Miss Drake, what is it? What happened? Oh, oh it's, it's Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson. Hey, Johnson. Johnson. Wake up. Hey, something's wrong, all right. Hey, let me have a look. I'm a doctor. Guys. Guys, Rita, what's the matter? Well, doctor? Uh, this man is dead. What? Oh, dead. Guy dead. Now, now try to steady yourself, Miss Rogers. Now, what happened, Miss Drake? Well, Mr. Johnson wanted some coffee, and when I brought it, I I found him this way. But, uh, oh, I'm forgetting my duties. I, I should get coffee for all of you. Swell idea. I have uh, Mr. Johnson's his tray up forward in the galley. But I guess you wouldn't want that after what's happened. Excuse me, I'll... I'll go up and get some fresh coffee, please. Well, Dr. Baker, have you found anything of interest? Uh, nothing special, except that this man has been dead for at least a half hour. Uh, hand me that instrument bag under my berth, will you please? Here you are, Doctor. Yeah, thank you. Oh, awful. Oh, perfectly awful. Come on, sis, quiet down. Oh, well, look here. Well, this is very strange. What is it, Dr. Baker? Uh, someone's had this instrument bag open. What? You see, everything's been disarranged. Good heavens. What's wrong? Well, this bottle... It's been half emptied. It contained a deadly poison. You mean he committed suicide? No, no. I've already examined his lips and mouth. He couldn't have drunk it, but the poison could have been administered by... Here, let me examine his arms. This is incredible. One drop of that poison would have been sufficient to... Uh, yes. Yes, you see, it's just as I feared. What do you mean, Dr. Baker? Uh, here, it's quite obvious. This tiny mark on the arm. The poison was injected by a hypodermic needle while the man was sleeping. You mean he was murdered? Uh, yes, Murdered. Well, look here. One of my hypodermic needles is missing from its case. But where is the needle? I certainly don't see it in Mr. Johnson's berth. Well, no. here's your coffee, everyone. Won't you please help yourself? Well, one moment, Miss Drake. Dr. Baker thinks that Mr. Johnson's been murdered. Murdered? Good heavens, Miss Corbett, how? Poison injected by a hypodermic needle. Uh, tell me, Dr. Baker, could this have been suicide? No, absolutely not. This poison takes effect almost instantaneously. If this were suicide, the needle would still be in the man's hand. Uh, Miss Drake... May we search the other berths? Why, of course. Then, Tom, will you look for the needle in the berths on this side? Yes, Phil. Uh, Miss Drake, you examine those on the opposite side. Yes, Miss Cole. What are you trying to do? Blame one of us? Yes, what's the idea? You can't go poking into our property. Oh, you're wrong there, Mr. Rogers. No one else on the plane is better equipped to handle the case. Miss Cole is Phyllis Cole, the criminologist. Well, how extraordinary. Well, Miss Cole, your late father and I were very close friends. Yes, Dr. Baker, I know. And ladies and gentlemen, we could hardly be in more capable hands. This young lady's father, Philip Cole, was one of the world's most brilliant criminal investigators. And Phyllis Cole is following directly in his footsteps. I found it. I found it. Look, here it is. Here Where it is. did you find it? At the foot of your berth, Miss Rogers. Rita, you didn't... You couldn't have. Of course I didn't, David. What are you people trying to do to me? Here, here Miss Drake. I'll take that hypodermic needle. But, Rita, why was it in your berth? I tell you, I don't know a thing about it. You dare accuse me, David. My own brother. No one is accusing you, Miss Rogers. That hypodermic needle could easily have been thrown into your berth by someone else. David! Why? Why did you? Say, Rita, wait a minute. You don't think I killed him? Well, why not? You often threatened to. Shut up, Rita. I won't. I won't. For even tonight, when Guy came and woke me up, Miss Coe asked the stewardess. She saw the three of us talking together. Go on, ask her. Ask her. Is this true, Miss Drake? Yes. About a half hour after you boarded the ship and went to bed, I was up forward in the galley when I heard voices. I looked into the corridor, and Mr. Johnson was standing by Miss Rogers' berth. They seemed to be arguing. Yes, but he started yeah, please, it. Please, Miss Rogers. Well, then Mr. Rogers opened his curtains and stood up in the corridor, and he began to argue. I went to them quickly to ask them to quiet down, and I heard Mr. Rogers say... I didn't mean it. I only wanted to scare him. What did you hear him saying, Miss Drake? He said, Guy, if you bother us again, so help me, I'll kill you. You admit that, Mr. Rogers? Yes, I, I did say that, but only to frighten him away. Miss Rogers... Guy Johnson was your husband, isn't that so? No. No. I happen to know that he was. Now, what was the trouble between you? Tell me the whole story. All right. All right, I will tell you. I married Guy five years ago when I was trying to get a break in the theater. He had a little money, and I needed somebody, anybody, to help me get ahead. We never loved each other. Our life together was a continual wrangle. Two years ago, I left him and went to Hollywood. It was difficult at first, but then I got my break. Since then, Guy has been constantly hounding me for money, blackmailing me. Blackmailing you? Yes. You mean he threatened to tell something he knew about you? Yes. Oh, yes. He could have ruined my career. And what about you, David? How do you fit into this? When my sister made good on the coast, she sent for me to come out and be a personal manager. 
My biggest job has been to fight Johnson off. You wouldn't believe the amount of Reed's money we had to pay him to keep his dirty mouth shut. And when I saw him here tonight, realized that he'd caught up with us again, I lost my temper. But I didn't kill him. I'd never do a thing like that. No, but you'd throw that needle into my berth. I didn't do that, Rita. I didn't. Now, wait, please. We've got to start from the very beginning. Uh, Miss Drake, you seem to be calmer now. Yes, Miss Cole, I am. Then tell us exactly what happened. Well, after I had quieted the three of them, and they'd all gone back to their beds, Mr. Johnson rang for me. I went to his berth, and there I found him. And he was reading a magazine. Go on, Miss Drake. He asked me to bring him some coffee. I went to my galley and got the coffee, and... About three minutes later, I brought it back to him, right on his, on his tray. He seemed to be sleeping, and when I shook him, he, he didn't wake up. And then, without taking a second to think, I, I lost my head and I screamed. It, it was that scream that woke the rest of you. Is that all, Miss Drake? Yes, that's all. Do you think I'd better go up to the pilot's cabin and have them radio ahead for the police? I think not. I think my friend Mr. Taylor will do that for us. Certainly, Phil, whenever you're ready. But it's really my job as a stewardess. Yes, Miss Drake. But I don't imagine you'll be stewardess much longer. Well, I, I don't understand. Why did you kill Guy Johnson? But, well, Miss Coa... Come, I... Miss Drake, there's no use lying well, any longer. You've just made it quite plain that you're not very good at lying. All right. Guy Johnson and I are starting even once again. What made you do it? Yes, you little beast. Why did you throw that needle into my berth? I hated you, Rita Johnson, because you were really his wife. My real name is Helen Johnson. I changed it to Helen Drake. I met Guy two years ago in Chicago, married him, and, and then we had a little boy. What? I married you? Yes. And after the baby came, Guy told me about you. And then he deserted us. My baby died from starvation. I had only one thing left to do in life. And that was to kill the man who killed my baby. Tonight was the first time I'd seen him since. He had poor eyesight. Without his glasses, he didn't recognize me in those dim lights. Well, that's all. And now, Miss Cole, I'm ready. I'm ready to go and join my baby. <laughs> It's a lucky thing Phil Cole, the girl detective, was in that airplane. No knowing what might have happened if she hadn't been there. Why do you suppose Phil suspected Helen Drake? You say you suspected her right from the start? Then you'll have an easy time giving three reasons which enabled Phil Cole to discover the guilty person. You heard all that happened on the plane. You know all that Phil knew. All you have to do is to answer the contest question which you'll find in the Philco mystery book. $50,000 in cash prizes, weekly prizes, big grand prizes. Everything is explained fully in the book. All the rules, regulations, what to do and how to do it. If you haven't secured a free copy of the Philco Mystery Book from your Philco Radio Tube dealer, get one right away. You must have this book to enter this great contest. Your answer must be written on the official entry blank. Get in this contest of skill now. Your skill may win for you. Names of major winners in this week's contest will be broadcast as soon as possible on a following Philco Radio Mystery program. Listen each week for Philco Radio Mysteries at this time over this station. This is a good time to have your radio tubes tested. You want good reception so that you will not miss anything in any Philco Mystery broadcast. Install Philco tubes. Then you know you'll get good reception. This Philco Radio Mystery was the last one contained in Philco Mystery Book Number 1. Philco Mystery Book Number 2, with four more problems in the great Philco Radio Mystery Contest, is now ready for you at your Philco Radio Tube Dealer store. Free. Be sure to get yours. Next week, another Philco Radio Mystery, and another opportunity to win a huge cash award. Get your share of that $50,000 in prizes. Hear Phil Cole, the girl detective, solve another baffling mystery. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Listening to the show. You know the one thing that's been around since those cave guys were living and still around? Art, right? They used to scratch it into the walls. Forget about it. I know you ain't gonna do that, so I got something for you. You wanna decorate your cave? Well, your house. You wanna have something really nice decorating your walls, right? 
Yeah, of course you do. I got a tip for you. Check out ArtByWeeze.com. Her art is gorgeous. You can even get high-quality prints of her art starting at only 10 bucks. Go there, or drop into her studio at 700 Diamond Avenue in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Tell her Dan sent you. She'll give you 10% off. Hey, I'm looking out for you.